Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. We upload a new episode every Wednesday, and they just keep getting better and better. If you or someone you know is an interesting trad archer, leave a comment below. We'd love to get you on the show. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the tradlifearchery.com. We have toques, we have hats, we have mugs, just a bunch of stuff over there. And anything you buy goes to support this channel. We do really appreciate it. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers, and we're here with Rick Stonebreaker. How are you, Rick? Great. Hey, thanks, um, it's thanks a for having me. Hey, no worries. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, man, I've been watching you shoot uh, uh, for, for a while now. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Hey, can you tell our listeners uh, a little bit about your background, where, where you started, and then kind of all your accomplishments up to you know, this point right now? I thought you said we only had a half hour. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, well, you know, I, was, biggest ones. <laughs> I was about uh, 15 years old in Pennsylvania, and they started a bow hunting season in Pennsylvania. So my stepdad, my uncle, and a couple of friends, they started hunting deer with a bow and arrow. Uh, every evening they would come downstairs in our cellar, our basement, and throw darts and tell all kinds of lies on their, their hunting that day. And then after a couple of days or a week or something like that, they came up with a flippant uh, comment, talk, 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 where's the deer? Where's the venison? And <clears throat> excuse me. And somebody said, well, if you think you can do any better. And there was one bow left on the rack. It was, uh, I forget even what type of bow it was. So I went out and practiced and uh, dad got me a license. And on the first day I hunted, we were just about ran out of light when we saw a deer and it was, it was, it was dim. And all I could see was his tail sticking up. So I aimed at the tail and moved about 18 inches to the left, aimed at the tail, moved about 18 inches to the left. And on the third time I took the shot and got the deer. We waited about a half an hour and then went and got it. So it was put up or shut up. And uh, I got a deer on the first day I hunted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I was, so then you're, are you a hunter for life now? Is that? No, well, Growing up in Pennsylvania, you pretty much uh, are required to go hunting and put meat on the table. Okay. Okay. Um, I was working. I graduated from high school. I was working. Uh, the bow that they gave me broke. So I did a mail order. Ben Pearson Pinto mm -hmm. came in the mail and actually came to the shipping dock where I was working and one of the archers recognized it as a bow and told me to bring it out to Chief Logan Archers. So I went out there and started shooting out there. I shot for the first year in bare bow and shot for, I think about a, a year. And back in Pennsylvania, that organization, if you sure to shoot a certain score, you moved up from D to C to B to A. And there was only one other person in the state that was A-level. And so I think the following season, somebody let me a sight and I put the sight on the bow and then slowly moved from B to C to B to A and stayed there until I would say somewhere around 2006. When I lost my job, we're going to, we'll jump forward and go back. When I lost my job at NASA in 2006, I got reinstated back at the Union, uh, International Union of Operating Engineers, heavy equipment, and going to the Union Hall, looking for a job, don't know where, when, how long. It threw me completely out of my routine, and I pretty much stopped shooting for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. But in that time, I was still hosting uh, the TSAA, Texas State Archery Association, um, state field championships every year and somewhere around 2012 or 2013 I tinkered a little bit with bare bow mm -hmm. and then I was the tournament director and the host of the 2013 
2014 National Field Championship in Eagle Lake. And that's when I met the Barebo gurus of the time. Uh, that's the first time I met John Demmer, Alan Eagleton, Ben Rogers, uh, John Wirt came down from uh, Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And I was just watching those guys shoot unmarked, marveling at what they were doing. And in 2015 is the first time I competed in Barebo nationally. Well, okay, so then what happened in 2015? How'd you do? Well, I was in the master's division. We were up at Yankton. I won the master's division. Oh. And um, that was my first time at unmarked. So when we got done with the marked round, Ben and Demmer come up to me, was curious what my field score was. And my field score was actually higher than theirs. Whoa, nice. But they, out, they outshot me overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was 215, uh, so 2015, sorry, <laughs> 2015. Um, then then what, what have you done since then? Oh, gosh. Uh, 2016, I switched over to the adult division. I left the old folks alone for a while. Um, came in second at field, came in, uh, I won the, uh, the qualifier at Alabama. I beat John and then John beat me in the elimination round. So we each got a gold and a silver. Nice. And uh, the following year at it, it, uh, Indiana, I was in the uh, uh, senior division as well and came in second in the qualifying to Demmer and second in the uh, elimination rounds to Dillinger. Mm -hmm. So the first two years that I competed, the first two years that they had USAT for Barebo, I was actually in the adult division. And then the four years, three or four years after that, I was in the master's division and was on USAT every year. Yeah, you, you've done some incredible stuff and you just continue to, to, to impress. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. What's sort of your, so all this time you're going up, growing up and, you know, you said you start off when you're 15, you basically, you know, uh, pegged a, a deer in the dark uh, by kind of moving and kind of anticipating. Were you shooting instinctive at that time, do you think? Or do you, were you aiming back then? Um, that was probably instinctive then. Okay. And then, so um, you, you've moved to aiming, of well, course, obviously, bare bow. Well, for hunting, for hunting, we put a sight on the bow, a simple sight on the front of a bow. Okay. I think it was called that uh, a Reynolds site. It was brass. Okay. It was uh, it was like a ten dollar site, and that uh, that was probably as good a site as you ever can put on a bow for for ten dollars. A Reynolds site. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Okay, so then, all right, so then you're you're using sighted. Then then you moved into bare bow once you saw these guys shooting, you know, uh, pretty good scores, um, and then did you did you did you have a coach or did you have anyone tell you what to do or how to do it or were you coaching or how never, how was never had a coach what 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 is it just uh i was in a small town in tyrone pennsylvania yeah. darwin kyle was a coach at the time but he never coached me he encouraged me but he actually never coached me so uh i would go to the national tournaments to watch the likes of uh, Daryl Pace, Ed Eliason, Rick McKinney, later on, Jay Bars. So I always shot my best scores when I went to the national championship, but I always got my butt kicked because they were they were a, a notch ahead. They were, they were a level above me. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much chased them all my life. The only time I've ever had uh, any kind of luck was when they started the OR rounds. And then, um, and now, so explain what an OR round is. An OR round, Olympic round. Um, oh, like Olympic recurve. Hmm. Yes, this is all. This is all prior 2015. Right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm caught up. Now. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Fine. <laughs> all right. So that that's pretty interesting, though. So no coach. Uh, you're teaching yourself. Uh, and you're, you're doing well. Um, and then you, you, you skip into bare bow a little bit later on, but you lately, you've been doing some really amazing stuff as well. Like some really amazing scores and you've been out on the circuit and you continue to, com you continue to compete. Um, you know, I had Jeff Hale on the, 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 the show 
uh, last week and, and he was like, Hey, you got to get Rick on here. Cause I said, yeah, I always see him shooting. He's, he's always doing good. Boy, he was annoying. Wasn't he? He said, yeah, it was, it was, well, this is what was annoying when I was listening to that. He was shooting compound and he shoots tread then he switches over to bear boat in like a year and he takes two titles away from me. That's <laughs> annoying. And I thought I annoyed people. <laughs> that, is so, that is the best way to put it. That's the best way to put it. I, I, the whole time uh, talking to him, like I'm a, I'm a, I think a rec recreational uh, bear bow shooter. Cause I, I'm just terrible at it. It's fine. I'm fine uh, with it, but I keep saying it. So maybe I'm not, but when I see this guy go out and after two years, he just kills it. You know, he just kills it. Uh, it's just amazing to me. These guys that get so good. I, I, I can't believe you guys. And now you're telling me no coaching. And, and all, all I'm thinking about and telling my, you know, my friends or anyone that wants to get into bear boat, Hey, go out and get a coach. I'll save you so much time and frustration. But how do yes, I tell them that? How do I tell them that when there's guys like you out there? Well, um, I started coaching a couple of years ago when Claire Z came up to me yeah. and wanted me to coach her. And I was always reluctant to do that. Mm -hmm. And then within a short period of time, Nate uh, Cartwright from East Texas always also asked me to coach. So I started working with the two of them and they that one summer, all three of us, when we went out to Ohio for the national field championship, all three of us won our national title in our division. Yeah, clear. That was pretty. That was pretty cool. But yeah, you guys, that was really cool. And you guys, again, there's another person, Claire G. What is going on with that person? What is going on with her? With her? How is she so good, so quick, so fast? It's just amazing. She, she's driven. Um, in fact, when one of her boys was in, uh, I don't want to get the wrong martial arts. Um, don't think it was judo. No, I, 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 I know this. I actually know the story. So she was in okay. judo, right? And she was. And there. so she was going with the boy and then decided to learn it herself. And I think she became a black belt in that too. Yeah. And she's a good pistol shot. So she has some natural ability. Okay. So at first I was, wasn't reluctant to coach her, but one of the first things I thought of is there was probably nobody in the area that could actually maybe help her improve. So I just, I just tell things the way it is. Uh, I decided to coach her because I didn't want somebody else messing her up, yeah. getting her off the wrong, wrong foot. Yeah, well, that's and, I, and I had the experience and the stories she was an excellent listener. Um, and then you have everybody else in the world is trying to give her pointers, but her, her husband, Joe, is really, really sharp. And she, he just told me that when, I, when other people are trying to tell her stuff and it just, she just lets it flow in and out and she, she listens to me. And, and quite frankly, that's the way it has to be. It has to be that you got to listen to your coach. You got to put out, you got to block all those other things out and you got to trust in the process. Right. So you got to right. trust in, right. in the process. So yeah, no, good, good, good insight and information for everyone listening. You know, there are so many people, I mean, I call them traditional archers. I call all, all of us traditional archers. Right. Anyone that's a single string. And, you know, we had a little bit over email there. I thought it was kind of funny. You're like, Hey, I'm not a traditional archer. In my opinion. Yes, you are. You're a traditional archer. You're on a single string. And that's kind of how I define it. Okay. Um, not so much in the tournament sense, but in the, in the, the single string sense and, and shooting right. with fingers. And so, you know, there are so many of us and we're, we're good sorts and we're good natured and you're going to run into the people on the range, not you, but people who are listening to this will run onto people on the range and you'll have like five different guys come up to you and say, Hey, try this, try this, try this, try this. It's really, it's, it's nice to say. And if you're one of those guys that does that, just kind of back off a little bit because unless someone asks for advice, uh, probably don't mess them up with something that they're working on because it is a process and we have to all go through that. Well, if you follow any of this stuff on the internet, the postings, yeah. Um, if somebody asks a question and maybe I'm one of the first four or five people, I may give some advice and try to help them out. But if I get on there late and there's already 20 or 30 people on there, then I don't, you know, they're already lost. <laughs> I know. And so, and so many of them, um, <clears throat> if they go past 50 words, then they've already said 50 words too many. 
And what's interesting is you rec you don't recognize any of these names that's giving this advice. <laughs> and it was so funny one time I gave somebody some advice and somebody says, well, I don't think that's the best thing to tell somebody. And I goes, when was the last time I saw you on a national podium? <laughs> that's the way it should be. I mean, you guys are kicking butt. You should. And if you're helping, if guys like you are helping, you, you know, I got big ears for, for people like you. And I think everyone should. Um, I mean, it's it's stressful. It's hard. I mean, it's hard enough. It's hard. Single string is hard enough in your, your, your backyard getting good at it. But then when you step up on that line, you know, that, that intensity, that pressure, and I've seen you shoot. It's almost like you're, don't take this the wrong way. It's almost like you're sleeping. It's almost like you're like, eh, been here before done that boom. Okay. I'm going to shoot that. It's almost like there's the pressure doesn't get to you. Is that, is that the case? Uh, pressure. Um, we were at, uh, Lancaster and John Wirt was kind of running the meeting. Um, Demmer was there and there was a panel of us sitting up there, Ben Rogers, Vaughn, um, there was an Olympic shooter up there, Olympic archer up there, not an Olympic, but Olympic style. And I forgot his name. I apologize. But the question of pressure that came up. And I guess, oh, let me handle this one. So back a number of years ago, do you remember Billie Jean King? Yeah, of course. Okay. She was a pioneer in women's tennis. Yeah. She wrote a book one time called Pressure is a Privilege. Hmm. Okay. Well, I never read the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But what I get out of the title is anytime you're on the line or you're in a limb rounds, and you're moving up and all of a sudden you're in unknown territory and you start to feel that pressure remind yourself i belong here i must have done something to get here okay so it's not even though it's the first time it's not uncharted territory because you deserve to be there yeah. so then you turn that pressure into what I call sometimes is uh, and the nerves and things like that. I kind of relate that to excited energy. Mm -hmm. That's the way I relate that. Okay. Yeah. And just today, uh, a, a family came all the way over from Louisiana, five hours to get some coaching today to get them started on the right foot. And um, okay. Sometimes I lose a train of thought. No, that's fine. You're fine. Louisiana, I mean, the pressure and someone came from Louisiana. Got it. Got it. Well, one thing I was telling them is um, that last shot. A lot of people have trouble with that last shot. I call it the money shot. Okay. Obviously, every shot you have to put as, as close to 100% as you can. But that last arrow, that last arrow is going to help you or cost you. Yeah. So I learned something from Jay Bars a long, long time ago. So what I do in practice is don't matter how many arrows it's in my quiver or how many arrows I'm going to shoot on that particular end, that last arrow, I stop, get out of my comfort zone because you're going to be out of your comfort zone on that last arrow okay. and look at the virtual crowd in front of you, thousands of people. This is a title on the line. A record on the line and put a little bit extra into that last shot because when you get up there and you have to perform that last shot you're going to feel a little nervous a little tight yeah. so i practiced i practiced that on every last arrow called my money arrow okay 1991 we're at the world indoor trials for the first FIDA World Indoor Championship, Olu Finland. I won the first round, I won the second round, I lost the third round, and we're down to the final match. It was five, three arrows, five ends. Uh, after the first end, I was two behind, it's cumulative. Second end, I'm one behind. Third end, I'm tied, we're tied. Fourth end, I take a one point lead, and going into that fifth end, we get up there, we both shoot a nine. He shoots a 10, 10, sits down, okay. The clock is running. My next shot, this is recurve Olympic. Yeah. My next shot was a beautiful 10 and one arrow to go. 
the clock is ticking. I actually had my fingers up here. The heart rate was, was elevated. Everybody else was done. And a 10 would put me on the team to go to Finland. When I got that heart rate down to where I thought it was, could possibly be under 100. <laughs> okay. Okay. One thing I reminded myself is I've done this before. I've practiced this before. I've done this hundreds of times. This is nothing new. And then with maybe 25 seconds on the shot, I, I pulled up, aim, click, release, got a 10. No good. Okay. So okay. What, I, what I told the kids this morning, when you get up there on that last shot, the one thing you should not do is go, oh, boy, I hope I don't mess this shot up. Mm. That's a tentative shot. You be, have to be an aggressive shot. This is my target. This is my target. And get up there and have a strong shot. That is great. That is great advice. I mean, be aggressive all the time. Uh, I like it. A good offense is better than, uh, you know. Uh, that's exactly right. Right. Yep. That, that's crazy. That That is great advice. So you're coaching now in down in Texas. Now, what, what town in Texas are you in? Houston. Oh, you're in Houston. Okay, cool. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. So um, that, that's nice to hear that you, you are coaching and, and offering your experience. Hey, you're still competing though. You're still competing. You're still very, very competitive. I mean, not, I mean, uber competitive, ultra competitive, like one of the top, I mean, how many times do you compete a year? Uh, we were lucky down here in Houston in 2020. We had uh, quite a few events, so it didn't back off too much for us. Um, of course, we didn't have national field last year for U.S. archery, but NFA in September, I believe we, we did. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I, it, it could all go back to my stepdad was not the most forgiving person. And when it came to shooting, I found out real quick, it, it, starting off with a rifle, that it was a whole lot easier to shoot in the center of that target than get your ass chewed out by him. Okay, that's how. You, that's why you're competitive. Okay. 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 So fear is my friend. <laughs> oh God! All right. Good. 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 I mean, some people are wired that way. It sounds like you're wired that way. And like I said, your demeanor on the line is probably okay. You know how when, um, well, maybe you don't, but you know, when we're watching on YouTube and we're watching Lancaster, we're watching any of the other shoots that are online that are televised and they put people up on a podium to shoot down, you know, 20 yards or 18 meters. Um, you know, when we're looking at that person, your heart is racing too. Like as a bare bow shooter, you're kind of like, you're, you're nervous for that person. But anytime I see you, I'm kind of like, oh, he seems okay. He <laughs> doesn't, I'm not nervous for that guy. I'm like, cause you make, you make it look very, anyway. You're like this duck on water, I think. Uh, so it's when, very impressive. When we, when we had those national bareboat finals in Cincinnati, I wish I was able to can whatever I had because I was, you, I shouldn't say you can shoot where you're relaxed. There, there's, a, there's a fine line there. But I just wasn't keyed up. I mean, it just, I felt kind of comfortable and I was able to win all three matches and Especially that last one, because I wasn't even paying attention to the score. <laughs> when I shot that last 10, the crowd went nuts. I'm standing there. Yeah, yeah you didn't know. Yeah. I'm just standing there looking goofy as hell. And Grayson goes, oh, yeah. you won. I go, what? You know, you I looked over and saw that all three of his arrows were to the left of center. And I go, holy crap. So I didn't even have time to get excited because I didn't even know it was on the line. <laughs> so Grayson had to tell you. And you could see it on camera. He leans over and says, hey, you just won. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny yeah that's how goofy funny. how goofy is that <laughs> i don't know that is funny though that is funny and then you know those and i did the same and i did the same thing with claire at uh, richmond last year when we were shooting against chrissy when she yeah. was shooting against chrissy in the final yeah uh, she lost the first end until she got her her blues out of the way and then the next three ends i mean she was just boom it lights out after she out. after she shot the six on the first arrow of the second end her last eight arrows were in a gold. And then she's standing there. She won it. And she's standing there. And she's kind of looking at me. And I goes, look at the judge. And the judge does this. She didn't know she won. 
<laughs> well, she actually explained that a little bit too. She said she can't actually see to that target. She can't see what she's hitting. I I, I saw an interview or something with her. Anyway, let's get back to you competing. Um, yep. I want to know what you're shooting right now. What what's your setup? What's your what's your bare bow setup look like? I have a uh, WFCD okay. weight forward um, technology by Demar and Dwayne Martin. Smart, yeah. Um, I got that about two years ago. Uh, before that, I had a Spigarelli. Okay. And a Spigarelli was a bow designed for bare bow, mm. same way as the CD. Yeah. Uh, I get in trouble sometimes when I say just about every other bow out there is not but, so, is not so much a bare bow as it is is a recurve bow that you have to add quite a bit of weight to it to get it to to function. Okay. So you're you're shooting um, um, CD archery a WF 29, 27? 27. 27. And then what limbs you got on there? I have the long limbs on it, so that gives me 72 inches. And do you know what manufacturer is the limbs? Win-win. Oh, they're win-win limbs? Okay. Yeah. And how much are you holding on your fingers? Uh, on right now, I, I went up one pound from indoors, and right now I'm holding just a tad over 40 pounds on the fingers. Oh, wow. That's great. That's awesome. What's your what's your arrow of choice? Uh Right now for target, last year and this year, my target arrow is, it's hard to believe, because I don't know of any other barebow shooter that shoot next 10s. Oh, okay. All right, good. So indoor, Indoors, I shoot the ACC. Okay. Uh, prior to that, and I still shoot the McKinney CT2 for field, because that arrow performs very well string walking all the way down to five meters. Oh, cool. So way down. The, the X10 isn't as smooth down to five and 10 meters because of the way the bow works when you're string walking. So That's, that is interesting. Yeah. So are you, just, are you running a ZT rest on there? Actually, uh, back when I had two Spigarillis, I had the ZT rest for target and the uh, Gabriel by drop for field and indoors. Okay. And now that I only have one bow, the CD, um, I actually have the buy drop on it and I'm just using it all the way. That's cool. And then uh, did we cover everything? Um, anyone else you want to give a shout out to that's that's kind of, uh, you know, that's uh, that you're shooting like veins or anything like that? that you the, have the, to... the vein issue is kind of weird yeah. because um, when I was shooting recurve, we tried to get, we tried to shoot anything out there that wasn't a spin wing because a spin wing was a high maintenance vein. Yeah. But it's what worked. Right. Okay. And it worked clear up until I started shooting X10s out of my recurve bow. And the veins, uh, flex flex veins, actually worked better. Okay. Yeah. What's so right now I have uh, boning veins on there. They're only an inch and a half long. And you wouldn't believe it if you, you, you saw it, but I actually took and cut a little bit of the vein down a little bit. It's a real low profile. And if you could, can imagine somebody trying to shoot bare bow with hardly any vein on there at all, it works. Really? It works. You must have your arrows really tuned well to your bow. Well, what I did last year is uh, I put some uh, pink veins on one time and the, the vein was actually too stiff. So I cut the vein off, but I left the, uh, the ridge there for some weight. I use that as uh, bare bow arrows, bare shaft arrows. Bare shaft, yeah. Okay, rather than put tape or something like that on, is I'll put three or four flex on an arrow and then cut the vein off and leave just the base on there and use that as a bare shaft. So you have the weight. Well, last year we were shooting at a tournament here in Houston and I shot the X10s with the mini veins on the first round and I shot something like 325, 326. And I says to Joe, I'm gonna try something on the second round. So I put them away and shot bare shafts 
on the next round and shot 319. Okay. With bare shafts. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I have to have five inch feathers just to hit the target. Hey, so, so though that that's that's pretty amazing, and uh, I'm just continuing to be impressed with your uh, amazing ability. Do you have any advice for someone who's getting into uh, bear bow right now? What would be the one piece of advice that you would give them to say, "Hey, try this. Uh, it's gonna make your life easier." It would be nice if they could get somebody to start them off. Um, Gulf Coast Archery started uh, September a year ago, and we've had two of my barebow seminars there. So they're getting the kids out pretty much on, on a good start. Mm -hmm. I know when I first started shooting barebow, I tried to keep it real simple by putting the finger in the corner of my mouth, and that's where I started. Mm -hmm. And so any kid that starts, they can pull up, finger in the corner of the mouth, and they can start from there. Okay. And we can move, we can move from there, but that's, that's a start. That's what was really neat in the fall of 2019, they had that U S archery symposium here in Houston mm -hmm. and guy Kruger got me a slot in there for doing part of my barebow seminar. Okay. Now the, my barebow seminar, usually I talk for about 40 minutes and then I demonstrate some shots and then with the help of some friends of mine for the next two and a half hours, these kids can shoot as much as they want. And we have about four people working with them. Okay. So I got invited to do the symposium and I only had one hour. Mm. So I spent about 25 minutes on the four key parts like I do in a seminar. And then I stopped right there and did my shooting and then I had a flyer that had eight more parts behind it that I don't do in my seminar because these coaches out there, they know that barebow has exploded over the last couple of years. Yeah. And they don't know how to teach barebow. So I had 52 level three, level four coaches listening to what I have to say about getting barebow, how to get started in barebow. That was pretty cool. That's awesome. That was pretty cool. That is awesome. Well, I mean, it, some people say those that those that can't the same. How does the saying go? Those that can't teach, you can and you can teach. So you kind of got both of those because uh, you know, you're bringing you know, home you're bringing home the titles. Yeah, that's that is true. That some people can do that. You know, of course, they always said when an athlete's art when an athlete's legs go, he can become a coach. And then when his eyes go, he becomes a referee. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay, we'll leave you with that. Uh, thanks very much, Rick, for, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Uh, it was a great, it was great meeting you. That was 30 minutes already? It's a little bit more than that. But oh, hey, man, let's go another hour. <laughs> is there some place, is there some place that we can or people that are listening to this can reach out to you and say hi and and and, and ask you a few questions? Like on Facebook or something like that? Uh, yeah, they usually do it on Messenger. Okay, on mm -hmm. Facebook. Okay, so you're on Facebook, so that's cool. And uh, what's your TikTok account? Are you on TikTok no, too? I don't have that. You don't do dancing on TikTok or anything? No, like that? I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks very much. And thanks everyone for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, until next time, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bye. All right, thank you. Bye.